All right, we're going to go through some identities that use the double angle identity. Um, we'll start out with some tougher ones and actually get to some easier ones at the end. So here's our first one. We want to prove the identity that sine 3 theta over cosine theta plus cosine 3 theta over sine theta is equal to 2 cotangent theta. Well, it would be pretty tough to um, redo this. Um, and try to expand this cotangent 2 theta out. We really don't even have um, a double angle identity for cotangent 2 theta. We could write one, right, because it is the same as um, 1 over tangent. But so let's instead, let's try to expand this side. Well, the first thing is we don't have an identity for 3 theta. So we're actually going to have to start by changing this to an addition problem. Okay, so instead of sine 3 theta, we're going to do the sine of 2 theta plus theta. So we're going to have to use some of our identities we've used in the past, our, our sum identities. We're going to do the same thing for our cosine. It's the cosine of 2 theta plus theta. And that's all over sine theta. All right, so from there, we need to write out what we get when we do sine 2 theta plus theta. So if you don't have it memorized, go ahead and take out your notes. What does that identity tell you to do? Well, it would tell me to do the sine of my first angle, so sine of 2 theta times the cosine of my second angle, so cosine theta, plus the cosine of that first angle, 2 theta, times the <laughs> sine of my second angle, theta. And again, that's all over the cosine of theta. Plus, now let's expand our cosine to theta plus theta. So the law of the sum of cosines goes something like this. We do the cosine of our first angle times the cosine of our second angle. So cosine 2 theta times cosine theta. Then we put the opposite sign, so minus, and we do the sine of those two angles multiplied. So sine 2 theta times sine theta. The entire thing is over sine theta. And now we're still just expanding to see what happens. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, we'll, we would start back over. All right. Well, notice now I can actually separate this into two fractions. So I'd have sine 2 theta cosine theta over cosine theta plus cosine 2 theta sine 2 theta over cosine theta. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to separate this, separate the numerator um, to form two fractions. Okay. All right. If anything would break down, that would be really nice because I'm supposed to end up with a single term here. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Well, here I have a cosine theta and a cosine theta, which cancel. Okay. And over here, I have a sine theta over a sine theta, which cancel. Notice that leaves me with a sine 2 theta minus a sine 2 theta, which would be 0. So those are now gone. And I'm left with cosine 2 theta sine theta plus cosine 2 theta cosine theta. And I forgot their denominators. Those are important. This one's over cosine theta, and this is over sine theta. Again, we're, we've dropped down a lot, but we're in, we want to get to one term. So let's see. Let's get a common denominator here. Um, it looks like our common denominator will be sine, cosine, theta. So let's go. Um, I'm going to multiply by a sine theta here. And whatever I do on the bottom, I have to do the same on the top. Over here, I'm going to multiply by cosine theta so that they both have sine and cosine theta. Whatever you do on the bottom, you have to do the same on the top. Okay, I'm going to scoot over just a bit. I'm still working on this left-hand side. Um, what that gives me is cosine 2 theta, and then sine times sine gives me sine squared theta, plus cosine 2 theta, cosine squared theta, because cosine times cosine is cosine squared, and that's all over sine theta, cosine theta. Whew. Well, notice on top I have cosine 2 theta in both places. So I can actually factor out a cosine 2 theta 
and I'm left with sine squared plus cosine squared, which was one of our basic identities, and we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So now I'm down to cosine 2 theta over sine theta cosine theta. Somehow that's supposed to be 2 cotangent theta. Well, if you run out of ideas, you can always come over here to this side and say, okay, what can I make this look like? Okay, so let's start working on, I'm going to split this off so we can keep them apart. Start working on this side to see if we can get it to budge at all. Well, cotangent is cosine over sine. So that would be cosine 2 theta over sine 2 theta. Well, I have something pretty encouraging here, right? I have a cosine 2 theta here and a cosine 2 theta here. So that matches up. The thing that doesn't match up is in the bottom here I have sine times a cosine, and here I have sine 2 theta. Well, what is sine 2 theta equal to? If I go to my identities, it's equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So now I have 2 cosine 2 theta over, and I'm using my identity here, this is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Oh my gosh, look at that. I have a 2 in the top and bottom that can simplify, and I get two, cosine 2 theta over sine theta cosine theta, which is what I have on this side. The two sides are equal, and I've proven my identity. I know that was not pretty, but it was, it was doable. Okay, so work on one side if you get stuck or it's not looking like you're going to be able to get it all the way like the other side. Start working on the other side and breaking it down a little. Okay, let's take a look at what we have for this one. We have cotangent 2 theta equals 1 half cotangent theta minus tangent theta. Let's try breaking down our double angle here. Um, cotangent 2 theta would be cosine 2 theta over sine 2 theta. Okay. Well, notice over here we don't have any double angles, so now we want to break down these double angles using our double angle identities, which we have down here. Now, sine 2 theta is easy because it only has one possibility. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Cosine 2 theta, on the other hand, has three options. It can either be cosine squared minus sine squared, 2 cosine squared minus 1, or down here at the bottom, cut off, 1 minus 2 sine squared. We can try any of those, but if I look at this, I notice I have a cotangent and a tangent over on this other side, which probably means I'll need a sine and a cosine to be involved. So I'm going to go with option number 1 here, that cosine 2 theta is cosine squared minus sine squared. Okay. All right. Well, what can we do? Well, we can split this into two fractions. You can always split the numerator over addition or subtraction as long as you take the entire denominator with you on each one. That's one of the tricks of these is the knowledge that you can split the fraction. As long as it's the top, you're splitting and not the bottom. Okay, well, what comes from that? Well, cosine, 1 on the bottom, 2 on the top, so I can cancel there. And sine, I had 1 on the bottom here, and a sine squared on the top here. So I'm left with cosine theta over 2 sine theta minus sine theta over 2 cosine theta. Well, look, I'm pretty darn close. I have sine over cosine, which is the same as tangent. I have cosine over sine just the same as cotangent. I just have those twos in there. So I just need to rewrite that a little bit. I can rewrite this as one half times cosine theta over sine theta, right? That's That comes out as the same thing. And I can write this as one half times sine theta cosine theta. I can then factor out one half since it's present in both of them as a factor. And now I have 1 half times the quantity, cosine theta over sine theta, minus sine theta over cosine theta. Whew. And what are those equal to? Cosine over sine is, 
cotangent and sine over cosine is tangent and I have proven my identity. I showed by my work here that the left hand side and the right hand side are equivalent using my double angle identities.